Commander Juno's smug gray face contorted into a condescending smirk as the atmospheric readings of Earth flashed across the hollow screen. The advanced trill sensors had easily detected the distant blue planet, and what Juno saw filled him with scorn and derision. High concentrations of carbon dioxide, methane, and industrial pollutants coating the atmosphere, Juno sneered, his advisors chuckling along with him in the dim light of the massive alien ship's bridge. The inhabitants are still burning fossil fuels. How quaint! Advisor Zyloth leaned forward, his bulbous eyes narrowing. Rudimentary space technology at best. They've barely colonized their neighboring red planet based on these scans. Easy pickings. Juno bared his fangs. Indeed. We'll add this primitive backwater to our empire and strip it of resources. They can't hope to resist us. Far below on Earth's surface, a cold sweat broke out on the brow of brilliant NASA scientist Eugene Boyd. He stared at the pulsing signal on his screen, the blinking red dot heralding a grim revelation. Oh, Jesus Christ, Eugene whispered. Hostile aliens know we're here. They can see how primitive we are. His mind raced, a chilling certainty crystallizing. If these aliens decided to attack, humanity was doomed. Eugene's shaking finger stabbed at his comm system. This is Dr. Boyd. We have an extinction-level situation. I need to speak to the president now. The year was 2050. Humanity had established tenuous colonies on Mars, but the gulf between the stars remained unbridged. Earth still relied on burning ancient plants for power. To an advanced spacefaring race, humans would appear to be primitive sitting ducks. As Eugene waited with gritted teeth for the call to connect, he watched the blinking red dot grow closer on his screen. The titanic alien vessel had entered the solar system, taking up an ominous orbit around Jupiter. He knew with nauseating certainty that they were analyzing Earth and finding it ripe for conquest. When the president's ashen face finally filled the screen, Eugene didn't mince words. We've been discovered. Their technology is centuries beyond ours. Our carbon dioxide emissions and pollution will make it obvious we can't defend ourselves. He took a breath, his eyes hardening unless we drastically alter our atmospheric profile to fool them. The president blanched, his voice a strained whisper. What are you proposing? Eugene outlined his desperate plan, a frenzied tapping of keys sending schematics flashing across the screen. We need to make our atmosphere look far more advanced and dangerous than it is, seed it with decoy signals and artificial elements. If we can convince them we're more trouble than we're worth to conquer. The president looked grim. The other world leaders are torn between attempting to communicate or preparing for war. But you think this deception is our only chance? Eugene nodded firmly. Trying to fight would be suicide. We have to deter them from attacking in the first place. It's a long shot, but it's the only way to avoid extinction or enslavement. As the alien ship began to move, an ominous blip growing closer on the screen, the president took a deep breath. The fate of humanity hung in the balance. Whatever you need, Dr. Boyd, make it happen. We're out of time and options. Eugene set his jaw. The most important and desperate scientific effort in human history began now, and failure was not an option. Eugene marched into the secure briefing room, his teeth clenched and eyes blazing with intensity. The president and the assembled Joint Chiefs of Staff swiveled to face him, their expressions a mix of apprehension and desperate hope. Gentlemen, Eugene began, his voice steady despite the enormity of the moment. The alien ship is bearing down on us. Based on their scans, they believe we're primitive and defenseless. He paused, letting the grim reality sink in. But I have a plan. With a flick of his wrist, Eugene activated the holographic display. A shimmering image of Earth appeared, surrounded by a dense network of glowing nodes. We launch a fleet of high-altitude balloons and drones, Eugene explained, gesturing to the nodes, each carrying a payload of sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxide, and exotic heavy elements. When dispersed in the upper atmosphere, this cocktail will mimic the signature of a highly advanced civilization. The president leaned forward, his brow furrowed. Advanced how, exactly? Eugene's eyes gleamed. Nuclear fusion reactors matter-antimatter power plants, 
industrial scale quantum computing. He let out a sharp breath. Technology centuries beyond our current capabilities. Murmurs rippled through the room. The president held up a hand, his gaze locked on Eugene. You're proposing we trick them? Fool them into thinking we're far more advanced than we are? Eugene nodded firmly. It's our only chance. If they believe we're primitive, they'll invade and strip our planet bare. But if we can convince them we're too advanced to be worth the trouble. He trailed off, letting the implication hang in the air. The president exchanged glances with his advisors, the weight of the decision etched on their faces. After a long, tense moment, he turned back to Eugene. How confident are you this will work? Eugene met his gaze unflinchingly. It's a gamble, but it's the only way to avoid extinction or enslavement. We have to try. The room fell silent, the gravity of the situation pressing down like a physical weight. Finally, the president nodded slowly. Then we have no choice. Operation Pinnacle is a go. The room erupted into a flurry of activity. Eugene barked orders to his team, directing them to assemble the balloon drone fleet and prepare the chemical payloads. The president mobilized the nation's resources, authorizing whatever Eugene needed to make Operation Pinnacle a success. As the countdown to the alien scan ticked away, Eugene and his team worked feverishly. Balloons and drones were loaded with canisters of atmospheric additives. Scientists calibrated the dispersal mechanisms with painstaking precision. With mere hours to spare, Eugene's assistant Ajit burst into the control room, his face ashen. Dr. Boyd, he panted, we have a problem. The Trill are using a spectrographic scanning method we didn't anticipate. We need an additional element to make this work, Promethium. Eugene's blood ran cold. Promethium was incredibly rare, and they had none on hand. How much do we need? At least 500 kilograms, Ajit replied grimly. And we need it dispersed with the other elements. Eugene sucked in a sharp breath. Without Promethium, their entire plan would unravel. The Trill would see through the ruse and realize Earth was ripe for conquest. Find it, Eugene ordered, his voice tight with urgency. I don't care how, but find me that Promethium. We can't fail. As Ajit raced off to secure the elusive element, Eugene turned back to the countdown clock. The numbers seemed to blur before his eyes as the weight of the world pressed down on his shoulders. On the Trill ship, Juno watched the scans of Earth with narrowed eyes. The readings were perplexing. Elements and gases that should have been impossible for a primitive species flickered across the screen. This doesn't make sense. Juno muttered, his claws tapping restlessly against the console. If they possess fusion and antimatter technology, our initial assessment was flawed. The science officer nodded, his expression troubled. Perhaps we underestimated them. Additional scans are needed before we proceed. Juno leaned back in his chair, a flicker of doubt creeping into his mind. If the humans were more advanced than they'd assumed, conquering Earth might prove far more difficult than anticipated. Back on Earth, Eugene paced the control room, his nerves frayed to the breaking point. The success of Operation Pinnacle hinged on securing the Prometheum, and time was running out. Ajit's voice crackled over the radio, breathless and urgent. Dr. Boyd, the Prometheum supply is tainted, it's unusable. Eugene's heart seized in his chest. Without Prometheum, the entire plan would collapse. The Trill would see through the deception, and Earth would be laid bare. Ajit continued, his words tumbling out in a rush. I checked with the supplier. The batch we received was contaminated during processing. They don't have any more. Eugene banged his head against the console, his mind racing. They were out of options and nearly out of time. If he couldn't find an alternative source of Prometheum immediately, Operation Pinnacle would fail. And Earth would be at the mercy of the alien invaders. Eugene smacked his palm on the console, his mind racing. The clock on the wall ticked relentlessly, each second bringing Earth closer to potential annihilation. Ajit, he barked, spinning to face his assistant. Get on the horn with every lab, every research facility on the planet. We need Prometheum, and we need it now. Ajit nodded grimly, his fingers flying across the keyboard as he fired off urgent messages to their international counterparts. Eugene grabbed his phone, 
scrolling through his contacts with trembling hands. Come on, come on, he muttered, dialing number after number. Each call ended in failure, his hopes dwindling with every negative response. Just as despair began to set in, his phone lit up with an incoming call. Eugene, it's Dmitri from Novosibirsk. Eugene's heart leapt. Dmitri, tell me you have good news. We might have what you need. There's a small cache of Prometheum at our remote lab in Siberia. It's not much, but... It'll have to do, Eugene cut in. I'm sending a team now. Thank you, my friend. You may have just saved the world. As Eugene dispatched a retrieval squad, alarms blared on the Trill ship. Juno leaned forward, his eyes narrowing at the flickering hollow display. These readings can't be accurate, he growled. No pre-FTL civilization could produce such atmospheric anomalies. His science officer, Zix, cleared his throat nervously. Perhaps we should investigate further before committing to invasion. Juno's claws tapped against his armrest as he considered. Deploy a stealth probe. If this is some primitive trick, we'll expose it. Back on Earth, Eugene's team worked feverishly to modify a high-speed jet. Technicians swarmed over the aircraft, attaching dispersion canisters and calibrating release mechanisms. We'll have one shot at this, Eugene told the pilot. Hit that atmospheric window dead on or we're all doomed. As the jet prepared for takeoff, Eugene's calm crackled to life. Dr. Boyd, we have a problem. Blizzard conditions in Siberia. Our birds grounded. Eugene's blood ran cold. No, 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 he whispered. Then inspiration struck. Get me the Russian weather service. Minutes later, a high-altitude weather balloon ascended into the stratosphere, carrying its precious cargo of Prometheum. Eugene watched its progress on the tracking system, sweat beating on his brow. In low Earth orbit, the Trill probe silently began its scan. Its sensors probed deep into the atmosphere, collecting data that would determine humanity's fate. The balloon reached dispersal altitude just as the probe's scan neared completion. With a soft pop, the canister detonated, releasing a cloud of Prometheum that mixed with the cocktail of elements already seated in the atmosphere. On the Trill ship, Juno stared in disbelief at the incoming data. Impossible, he breathed. These readings suggest technology far beyond anything we've encountered in this sector. He turned to his advisors, conflict evident in his eyes. We can't risk engaging a civilization of this level. The potential losses would be catastrophic. With great reluctance, Juno gave the order. Abort the invasion. Set course for the outer system. We'll need to reassess our entire strategy for this sector. As the massive alien vessel turned away from Earth, cheers erupted in mission control. Eugene slumped in his chair exhaustion and relief washing over him in equal measure. We did it, Ajit said, his voice filled with awe. We actually fooled them. Eugene nodded slowly, his gaze fixed on the retreating blip on the scanner. For now, he said softly. But this is just the beginning. We've bought ourselves time, but we can't waste it. The universe is bigger and more dangerous than we ever imagined, and we need to be ready for what comes next. Eugene's office buzzed with frantic activity as he paced back and forth, barking orders into his comms unit. The massive holographic display at the center of the room showed the Coalition vessel's inexorable approach, a menacing red blip crawling ever closer to Earth. I want every AEDC ship recalled immediately, Eugene commanded, his voice tight with tension. Divert all power to the orbital defense platforms and get me a direct line to the Security Council. Ajit, now Eugene's chief of staff, rushed into the room clutching a data pad. Sir, we finished decrypting more of Juno's transmission. You need to see this. Eugene snatched the pad, his eyes widening as he skimmed the contents. Christ, he muttered. They've been watching us this whole time. The pad clattered to the desk as Eugene turned to address the room. Listen up, people. The Coalition has been monitoring our progress for years. They know about the antimatter research, the quantum computing breakthroughs, everything. We can't afford to underestimate them. A chorus of affirmatives echoed through the office as Eugene's staff redoubled their efforts. 
He turned back to the hollow display, studying the approaching vessel. Its sheer size dwarfed anything humanity had ever constructed. Sir, a young technician called out, we're receiving telemetry from the Jupiter defense grid. The alien ship is... it's accelerating. Eugene felt his stomach drop. Time to intercept? The technician swallowed hard. At current speed, less than six hours. The room fell silent as the magnitude of the situation sank in. Eugene took a deep breath, steadying himself. All right, this is what we've been preparing for. Ajit, alert all AEDC personnel. We're initiating Protocol Omega. Ajit's eyes widened. Sir, are you sure? We've never actually... We don't have a choice, Eugene cut him off. It's now or never. As Ajit hurried to carry out the order, Eugene turned to address his command staff. I need status reports from every department. Weapons, shields, communications, everything. We're going to throw everything we've got at these bastards. The next few hours passed in a blur of activity. Eugene coordinated with military leaders around the globe, mobilizing Earth's defenses. The orbital platforms hummed to life, their massive energy weapons charged and ready. Deep in secret bunkers, scientists made final adjustments to experimental technologies reverse-engineered from the Trill data. As the coalition ship entered the inner solar system, Eugene stood before the United Nations Security Council. His voice rang out, clear and resolute. For ten years, we've worked tirelessly to prepare for this moment. We've made incredible strides, pushing the boundaries of science and technology. But make no mistake, we are facing an enemy of unprecedented power and ruthlessness. He paused, his gaze sweeping across the assembled world leaders. The road ahead will be difficult. We may suffer terrible losses. But I promise you this. Humanity will not go quietly into the night. We will fight with everything we have, and we will prevail. As Eugene finished speaking, alarms blared throughout the AEDC command center. He rushed back to his post, where Ajit waited with a grim expression. They've entered Mars orbit, Ajit reported. Our outer defense line is engaging now. Eugene watched the hollow display as humanity's first line of defense opened fire on the alien behemoth. Energy beams and antimatter warheads streaked across space, impacting the coalition ship in a dazzling light show. For a moment, hope surged through Eugene's chest. Then the smoke cleared, revealing the alien vessel virtually unscathed. It returned fire, and Eugene could only watch in horror as the Mars defense grid was obliterated in a matter of seconds. All ships fall back to secondary positions, Eugene ordered, his voice hoarse. Concentrate fire on their weapon systems. As Earth's fledgling space fleet engaged the invaders in a desperate battle above the Red Planet, Eugene turned to Ajit. Status on Protocol Omega? Ajit consulted his data pad. The package is ready for deployment, sir, but are you sure about this? The risks? We're out of options, Eugene cut him off. Humanity's survival is at stake. Give the order. As Ajit relayed the command, Eugene stared at the looming shape of the coalition vessel on the hollow display. In mere hours, the fate of Earth would be decided. He only hoped the gamble they were about to take would be enough to turn the tide. The AEDC command center erupted into chaos as alarms blared. Eugene Boyd stood at the center of the storm, his eyes fixed on the massive holographic display showing the coalition fleet's approach. Status report, he barked, his voice cutting through the din. A young officer spoke up, her voice tight with tension. Sir, multiple energy signatures detected. The coalition fleet is entering the outer system. Eugene's expression resolute. Alert all orbital batteries. Bring defense grid online. I want every AEDC warship ready for immediate deployment. The next hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Eugene coordinated Earth's defenses, his voice steady as he issued orders to ships and stations across the system. Suddenly, a blinding flash lit up the display. Eugene squinted, his heart sinking as he realized what he was seeing. Mars defense platforms are down, an analyst called out. Coalition flagship just took them out with some kind of energy weapon. Before Eugene could respond, another officer shouted, Sir, 
We're detecting multiple smaller craft breaking off from the main fleet. They're heading for the inner system. Eugene leaned in, studying the tactical readouts. They're going for our lunar bases and asteroid facilities. Dispatch intercept squadrons immediately. As AEDC ships scrambled to meet the threat, Eugene made a fateful decision. Prepare the antimatter missiles. We're taking a shot at their flagship. The missiles launched, streaking across space toward the massive alien vessel. For a moment, hope surged through the command center. Then the missiles impacted, and Eugene's heart sank. No effect, an officer reported. Their shields absorbed the blast. Before Eugene could issue new orders, the world around him exploded. The command station rocked violently as coalition weapons found their mark. We've lost primary power, someone shouted. Hull breach on decks three through seven. Eugene grabbed a nearby console to steady himself. Evacuation order. All personnel to escape pods. We're abandoning the station. Minutes later, Eugene found himself aboard the AEDC battlecruiser Defiant, watching helplessly as Mars fell to the alien onslaught. The Red Planet's antimatter facilities, Earth's ace in the hole, were now in enemy hands. We can't let them push any further, Eugene growled. He turned to his XO. Prep our drone fleet for kamikaze runs. We need to slow them down. The drones launched, slamming into coalition ships in fiery explosions. It bought them time, but at a terrible cost. As the titanic battle raged on, Eugene paced the Defiance Bridge. An idea began to form, a risky move that might turn the tide. Get me a secure line to special operations, he ordered. We're going to hit them where it hurts. Hours later, Eugene stood in the cramped hold of an old AEDC freighter surrounded by a hand-picked team of Marines and engineers. The ship's nuclear reactor hummed ominously, modified to serve as a Trojan horse. This is our one shot, Eugene told his team. We get aboard that flagship. We take it out from the inside. For Earth. The freighter burned hard towards the Coalition command ship, weaving through the chaos of battle. They docked undetected and all hell broke loose. Eugene led the charge through alien corridors, the sounds of gunfire and alien shrieks echoing around them. They fought their way towards the engine core, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Just as victory seemed within reach, everything went sideways. Alien troops swarmed them from hidden compartments, cutting down Eugene's team with precision fire. Eugene found himself dragged before Juno, the alien commander sneering down at him. Your pathetic resistance ends here, human, Juno gloated. You will serve as an example to your kind. But before Juno could carry out his threat, the ship shuddered violently. Alarms blared as a massive explosion tore through the vessel. In the chaos that followed, Eugene watched in awe as the mighty Coalition fleet began to retreat. They had won this battle, but he knew the war was just getting started. The acrid smell of fried circuitry filled Eugene's nostrils as he stepped onto the bridge of the AEDC flagship Defiant. Sparks showered from damaged consoles, and crew members rushed to extinguish small fires throughout the command center. Eugene's boots crunched on shattered display screens as he made his way to the tactical station. Status report, he barked, his eyes scanning the holographic display of the solar system. Commander Chen, her uniform singed and torn, looked up from her console. Coalition forces are in full retreat, sir. They've fallen back beyond Neptune's orbit. Eugene nodded, allowing himself a brief moment of relief before refocusing on the task at hand. Casualties? Chen's face tightened. Heavy, sir. We've lost over 30% of our fleet, and the orbital defense grid around Earth is at 40% capacity. Eugene absorbed the information, his mind already racing with plans and contingencies. Call an emergency meeting of the AEDC Council. We need to regroup and fortify our position immediately. Hours later, Eugene stood before the assembled leaders of Earth's defense forces. The Council Chamber... Nestled deep within a hardened bunker beneath the Rocky Mountains, buzzed with tension and exhaustion. We've weathered the first storm, Eugene began, his voice cutting through the murmurs of conversation. But make no mistake, this is only the beginning. The coalition will be back and we need to be ready. 
He activated a holographic display of the solar system, highlighting key strategic points. Our first priority is bolstering our orbital defenses. I want every satellite and space station hardened against EMP attacks. We'll also need to increase production at our asteroid mining facilities. They'll be prime targets in the next assault. Admiral Zhao, her weathered face creased with concern, spoke up. What about Mars? We've lost our primary source of antimatter production. Eugene nodded grimly. That's our most pressing concern. We need to replace that capacity as quickly as possible. He paused, steeling himself for the controversy his next words would spark. I propose we divert a significant portion of our remaining antimatter reserves to a new project, self-replicating von Neumann probes. The room erupted in a cacophony of voices. General Ortiz smacked his head on the table. Are you insane? We need every ounce of antimatter for our defenses. Eugene raised his hand, calling for silence. I understand the risks, but if we succeed, these probes will give us an exponential advantage in resource gathering and production. They'll be our key to outpacing the Coalition's war machine. After hours of heated debate, the Council finally agreed to Eugene's plan. As the meeting adjourned, Eugene pulled aside his chief engineer, Dr. Patel. How soon can we have the first batch of probes ready? He asked. Patel ran a hand through her graying hair. If we push our fabrication facilities to the limit, maybe three weeks. But Eugene, these things will be rough prototypes at best. Eugene clasped her shoulder. It'll have to do. Get it done. In the days that followed, Eugene oversaw a flurry of activity across Earth's orbital installations. Defense platforms were reinforced, weapon systems upgraded, and evacuation protocols streamlined. All the while, deep in secured laboratories, teams of scientists and engineers worked around the clock to bring the von Neumann probes to life. Finally, after weeks of feverish preparation, Eugene stood in the launch bay of the AEDC's most advanced warship, the Horizon. Before him, rows of sleek, silvery probes stood ready for deployment. This is it, he murmured to Ajit, who stood at his side. Our best hope for survival. As the Horizon and its escort fleet pushed deeper into the solar system, Eugene spent long hours poring over star charts and resource surveys. Their destination, Chiron, a massive Kuiper Belt object that would serve as the anchor for humanity's new antimatter production network. The journey was tense, with the crew on constant alert for coalition patrols. As they approached Chiron, Eugene's breath caught in his throat. The icy planetoid loomed before them, a blank canvas upon which humanity would stake its claim to the outer solar system. Begin construction of the command citadel, Eugene ordered as the fleet took up defensive positions around Chiron and launched the first wave of probes. It's time to see what these things can do. For days, Eugene watched with growing excitement as the Citadel took shape on Kiran's frozen surface. The von Neumann probes fanned out across the Kuiper Belt, their sophisticated AI systems identifying and cataloging resource-rich targets. Just as the first streams of antimatter began flowing from the newly constructed refineries, alarms blared throughout the command center. Eugene's blood ran cold as he processed the sensor data before him. Coalition ships detected! the tactical officer reported, her voice tight with fear. A full battle group on an intercept course. Eugene's mind raced as he assessed their options. The Citadel was far from complete, their defenses still in their infancy. He looked out at the swarm of half-built factory ships and mining drones surrounding Kiran, a desperate plan forming in his mind. Initiate emergency replication protocols on all von Neumann systems, he commanded and prepare for immediate combat deployment of all available units. As the coalition forces bore down on them, Eugene watched in awe as Chiron's orbital space filled with a chaotic swarm of newly spawned craft. Misshapen hulls, exposed circuitry, and half-formed weapon systems created a scene of industrial nightmare. All hands, prepare for combat! Eugene's voice rang out across the comm channels. Today we make our stand, for Earth. The ragtag fleet surged forward to meet the oncoming coalition battleships, antimatter warheads primed and ready. 
Eugene gripped the arms of his command chair, watching as humanity's bold strategy unfolded before him. The chaotic swarm of improvised craft surged forward, meeting the Coalition battleships head-on. Eugene watched the tactical display, his fingers digging into the arms of his command chair, as the two forces clashed in a maelstrom of weapons fire and explosions. Status report, Eugene barked, his eyes never leaving the holographic battlefield before him. Our von Neumann units are overwhelming their point defenses, the tactical officer reported, but their main batteries are tearing through our improvised hulls. Eugene nodded, a grim smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Keep pushing. We just need to hold them off long enough for... His words were cut short as the bridge rocked violently, klaxons blaring as damage reports flooded in. Direct hit on our starboard engine cluster, an officer shouted over the din. We're venting atmosphere. Eugene steadied himself against his console. Seal off the affected sections and reroute power. Keep us in the fight. The battle raged on, a desperate struggle of human ingenuity against alien firepower. Just as it seemed the tide was turning against them, a chorus of cheers erupted across the command center. Sir, coalition forces are breaking formation. They're retreating. Eugene allowed himself a moment of relief before snapping back into action. Don't let up. I want every functional unit we have harassing their retreat. Make sure they don't stop running until they're out of the system. As the last coalition ships vanished into the inky blackness of space, Eugene surveyed the wreckage-strewn battlefield. The cost had been high, but they had held the line. In the days that followed, Eugene threw himself into fortifying their position. The automated factories on Chiron's surface worked tirelessly, churning out new refineries, shipyards, and defense batteries at an exponential rate. Eugene stood in the newly constructed command center, watching as swarms of mining drones fanned out across the Kuiper Belt. Status on the minefield? he asked, turning to his chief engineer. We're at 60% coverage, sir, she replied. At current replication rates, we'll have a full defensive screen in place within the week. Eugene nodded, his mind already racing ahead to the next phase of their preparations. Good. What's the latest on the antimatter warhead prototypes? Before the engineer could respond, a young officer burst into the room, his face flushed with excitement. Sir! Long-range scouts have made contact. You need to see this immediately. Eugene followed the officer to the sensor station, his heart pounding as he took in the image on the screen. There, drifting in a field of debris, was the shattered hulk of the Coalition flagship. It's still mostly intact, the sensor operator explained. Looks like they abandoned it during their retreat. Eugene's eyes narrowed as he studied the derelict vessel. Prep a salvage team. I'm leading this operation personally. Hours later, Eugene found himself aboard the alien wreck, the harsh light of his helmet lamp illuminating twisted corridors and sparking control panels. As they made their way deeper into the ship, Eugene's team encountered an intact bulkhead, its alien script pulsing with faint energy. This is it, Eugene muttered. The command center. Get that door open. As the engineering team worked to bypass the alien security systems, Eugene felt a growing sense of unease. Whatever lay beyond this door could change the course of the war. With a hiss of escaping atmosphere, the bulkhead slid open. Eugene stepped inside, his eyes widening as he took in the holographic displays that flickered to life around him. My God, he breathed, watching as alien figures materialized before him. These are Juno's personal logs. As Eugene and his team pored over the data, the full scope of the threat facing humanity began to reveal itself. Hidden bases, secret weapons programs, and at the center of it all, a chilling revelation that made Eugene's blood run cold. The Omega Pathogen, he whispered, reading the alien text with growing horror. A biological weapon designed to wipe out the entire human race. Eugene's mind raced as he absorbed the implications. They had won a crucial battle, but the war was just the beginning. In fact, it was about to enter a new, terrifying phase. Returning to Chiron, Eugene convened an emergency meeting of his top advisors. As he laid out the grim intelligence they had uncovered, a heavy silence fell over the room. We can't just sit here and wait for them to unleash this weapon, Eugene declared. 
his voice steady despite the fear gnawing at his gut. We need to take the fight to them. His exo leaned forward, brow furrowed. Sir, with all due respect, how can we possibly mount an offensive against their home systems? We're barely holding our own as it is. Eugene activated a holographic display of the galaxy, zooming in on a distant nebula. The navigational data we recovered points to a hidden rebel base in the Carina region. That's where they're developing the Omega pathogen. That's where we strike. As the implications sank in, the room erupted into a flurry of activity. Officers poured over star charts, engineers debated ship configurations, and logistics teams scrambled to calculate supply needs for an interstellar journey. Eugene stood at the heart of it all, his face set with fierce concentration as he pieced together their audacious attempt. It was a long shot, a Hail Mary pass into the depths of enemy space, but the alternative was unthinkable. Days later, Eugene stood on the bridge of the AEDC's most advanced battlecruiser, the Defender. Around him, a fleet of humanity's finest ships prepared for the jump to faster than light speed. All ships report ready, sir, his exo announced. Eugene took a deep breath, steeling himself for the monumental task ahead. You all know what's at stake, he addressed the fleet. The fate of our entire species rests on the success of this mission. We cannot fail. With a brilliant flash of energy, the human armada vanished from the solar system hurtling towards the unknown dangers that awaited them in coalition space. As the stars streaked by outside the viewports, Eugene clenched his fists, his voice barely above a whisper. Hold on, Earth. We're coming for you. The Defender's engines flared to life, propelling Eugene's fleet away from Earth and into the vast unknown of interstellar space. Eugene stood on the bridge, his eyes fixed on the interface as familiar constellations twisted and warped, giving way to alien star patterns. Status report, he barked, turning to his XO. All ships accounted for, sir. We've cleared the Oort cloud and are maintaining stealth protocols. Eugene nodded, his eyebrows furrowed. Good. Set course for the Carina Nebula. Months crawled by as the fleet pushed deeper into uncharted space. Eugene spent countless hours poring over intelligence reports and strategic simulations, preparing for every conceivable outcome. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, a young ensign's voice cut through the tension. Contact! Scans are picking up a cloaked installation orbiting an ice dwarf. Eugene leaned forward, studying the grainy sensor feed. Magnify Sector 7. The image sharpened, revealing a web of defensive platforms and patrolling interceptors. Eugene's eyes narrowed as he assessed their defenses. Gather the command staff, he ordered. It's time to finalize our assault plan. In the war room, Eugene laid out his strategy to a group of grim-faced officers. We'll hit them from three angles, he explained, manipulating a holographic display of the target. Task Force Alpha will engage their orbital defenses head-on, drawing their attention. Meanwhile... Bravo team will deploy stealth frigates to insert ground forces here and here. He highlighted two locations near the base's support facilities. And you, sir? asked his XO. Eugene's expression hardened. I'll lead a specially modified warship directly into the heart of their base. We'll penetrate their outer defenses under cloak and strike at the bioweapon labs. As the fleet took up positions, Eugene stood on the bridge of his cloaked vessel the shadow blade. All hands, prepare for insertion, he commanded. The diversionary attack erupted in a hail of weapons fire, coalition defensive platforms lighting up the void. Under the cover of chaos, Eugene's ship slipped past their outer perimeter. We're in, the pilot announced. Scans are detecting a massive subterranean complex. Eugene nodded. Take us in, nice and easy. The shadow blade glided into a cavernous opening, its cloaking field shimmering as they passed layers of security. Eugene led a team of Marines through the airlock, their boots clanking on alien metal as they infiltrated the facility. Rounding a corner, they found themselves face to face with the bioweapons lab. Eugene's blood ran cold as he saw row upon row of missiles, each bearing the ominous Omega pathogen insignia. Breach and clear, he shouted. 
The Marines surged forward, catching the alien scientists off guard. Alarms blared as Eugene fought his way to the central control panel. They're trying to launch, a Marine yelled. Eugene's fingers flew across the alien interface, desperately working to override the launch sequence. One by one, he disabled the missiles, sweat beating on his forehead. Suddenly, a blinding flash erupted from a nearby launch tube. Eugene's heart sank as he realized a single warhead had escaped. No! he roared, hitting his fist on the console. As his team secured the facility, Eugene stared at the trajectory data, his mind racing. The Omega pathogen was now hurtling towards Earth, invisible and unstoppable. Sir, what are your orders? his XO asked, concern etched on his face. Eugene took a deep breath, steeling himself for the challenge ahead. Prepare the fleet for immediate departure. We're going home. Eugene's voice crackled over the comm system as the AEDC fleet surged back towards Seoul. All ships, maximum burn, every second counts. The stars blurred into streaks as the human armada pushed their engines to the limit. Eugene paced the bridge of the Defender, his eyes fixed on the tactical display showing their progress through the vast emptiness of interstellar space. Sir, we're approaching the Kuiper Belt, his XO reported. Eugene nodded, his face hardened. Broadcast on all frequencies. I want every sensor array in the system looking for that warhead. As they entered the solar system, Eugene immediately convened a war council on Chiron. The command center buzzed with frantic activity as officers poured over data streams and sensor logs. Nothing yet, sir, a young ensign reported, frustration evident in her voice. We've got deep space probes scanning every cubic kilometer of space between here and the Oort cloud. Eugene leaned over a holographic display of the solar system, his fingers tracing possible trajectories. It has to be out there. Keep looking. Days stretched into a week, then two. Eugene barely slept, subsisting on stimulants and sheer force of will. The weight of humanity's fate pressed down on him with each passing hour. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, a shout cut through the tense silence of the command center. Contact! We've got it! Eugene rushed to the sensor station, his heart pounding. Where? The technician manipulated the controls, zooming in on a section of the asteroid belt. Here, sir. It's using the debris field for cover, but we've isolated its energy signature. Eugene's eyes narrowed as he studied the readout. Clever bastards. Prep our fastest interceptors. We need to reach that warhead before it clears the belt. Within minutes, a strike force of AEDC's most advanced ships streaked away from Chiron, racing towards the asteroid field. Eugene stood on the bridge of the lead vessel, the Raptor, as they closed in on their target. Sir, we're picking up multiple contacts, the tactical officer reported. Coalition signatures. They were waiting for us. Before Eugene could respond, Space lit up with weapons fire. Coalition strike craft swarmed from behind asteroids, their energy weapons lashing out at the human fleet. Evasive maneuvers, Eugene barked. All ships return fire. We need to punch through their lines and reach that warhead. The void erupted into chaos as human and alien ships clashed. Eugene's cruisers unleashed salvos of missiles and railgun rounds, while coalition vessels retaliated with exotic particle beams and plasma torpedoes. Through the maelstrom of battle, Eugene spotted their objective, a sleek alien missile gliding silently through the asteroid field. There! All ships, concentrate fire on those escorts. We need to clear a path for our boarding teams. As the AEDC fleet engaged the main coalition force, a group of specially modified assault shuttles broke away, streaking towards the Omega warhead. Eugene watched the tactical display with nervous excitement as the human craft closed in. They've made contact, his XO shouted. Marines are attempting to breach the hull. Eugene allowed himself a small smile. Good. Now we just need to hold off Juno's forces long enough for them to disarm that damn thing. But the aliens had other plans. A massive coalition battleship, easily twice the size of Eugene's flagship, suddenly decloaked directly in their path. Its weapons ports glowed with building energy. All ships, brace for impact, Eugene shouted. 
the alien vessel unleashed a devastating barrage of antimatter warheads. The AEDC fleet scattered, but not before several ships were reduced to rapidly expanding clouds of debris. Eugene gripped his command chair as the Raptor shuddered under the assault. Warning klaxons blared as systems failed across the ship. Status report, he demanded. Multiple hull breaches, sir, his XO replied, voice strained. We've lost engines and weapons. We're dead in space. Eugene's mind raced as he assessed their rapidly deteriorating situation. Through the view screen, he could see Coalition ships moving to retrieve the Omega warhead. In that moment, Eugene made a decision. Plot a collision course with that missile, he ordered. We're going to ram it. His crew looked at him in shock, but quickly moved to comply. As the crippled raptor limped towards its target, Eugene opened a channel to the rest of the fleet. All ships, fall back to defensive positions. This is our only shot. The raptor's engines sputtered to life one last time, driving the vessel forward with gathering speed. Eugene watched as the Omega warhead grew larger in the viewscreen, alien vessels scrambling to intercept them. Sir, his XO said softly, it's been an honor. Eugene nodded, his eyes never leaving their target. For Earth, he whispered. The Raptor slammed into the Omega missile at tremendous speed. For a brief moment, Eugene saw a brilliant flash of light as the ship's experimental antimatter drive detonated. Then darkness. Eugene drifted in and out of consciousness, aware only of the cold vacuum of space pressing in around him. Through the cracked faceplate of his suit, he could see the scattered remains of both fleets floating silently in the void. A flicker of movement caught his eye. Coalition ships were regrouping, their weapons trained on his defenseless escape pod. Eugene closed his eyes, preparing for the end. Suddenly space lit up once more. Eugene's eyes snapped open to see a wave of AEDC battlecruisers streaming in from the outer system, their antimatter cannons blazing. The Coalition ships, caught off guard, quickly retreated under the brutal assault. As a human vessel moved to retrieve his battered escape pod, Eugene allowed himself to relax for the first time in weeks. They had done it. The Omega pathogen was destroyed, and Earth was safe. For now. Days later, Eugene stood before a somber gathering of AEDC officers and civilian leaders on Chiron. His body ached from countless injuries, but his voice rang out clear and strong. We've won a great victory, he began, but our fight is not nearly finished. Juno and her coalition still threaten not just our world, but our entire species. We can no longer afford to simply react to their attacks. The time has come to take the fight to them. Eugene activated a holographic display of nearby star systems. I'm ordering the construction of a new fleet, unlike anything humanity has built before. Its mission will be to push beyond our borders, to hunt down Juno's forces wherever they hide and to ensure that never again will Earth face such a dire threat. He paused, looking out at the faces of those who had fought and bled alongside him. The road ahead will be long and painful, but I have faith in the strength and ingenuity of the human spirit. Together, we will. Eugene Boyd stood on the observation deck of the Chiron Citadel, his eyes fixed on the vast shipyard stretching across the Kuiper Belt. The void buzzed with activity as swarms of construction drones and work crews swarmed over the hulls of massive warships taking shape. Status report, Eugene barked into his comm. His XO's voice crackled back. Dreadnought Vengeance is at 87% completion, sir. Carrier groups Retribution and Nemesis are fully crewed and running final systems checks. Eugene nodded, watching as antimatter injectors were carefully installed into the Vengeance's massive engine banks. The ship's gleaming hull bore the scars of countless battles, repurposed from the remnants of humanity's battered defense fleet. Suddenly alarms blared across the command center. Eugene sprinted to the main tactical display, where a junior officer was pulling up long-range sensor data. Sir, our deep space probes have detected massive energy signatures in the Antares cluster, the officer reported, her voice tight with tension. Eugene's eyes widened as he took in the readings. Hundreds, no thousands of ships were assembling. Coalition banners fluttered on the grainy footage, alongside the twisted sigils of a dozen mercenary clans and alien warlords. 
Get me a secure channel to all AEDC command staff, Eugene ordered, now. Within minutes, the grim faces of humanity's remaining military leadership filled the hollow display. Eugene laid out the situation in terse, clipped tones. The coalition is amassing an invasion force unlike anything we've ever seen, he explained, manipulating the tactical overlay to highlight key strategic points. If they reach Earth, it's game over. We have one shot at this. Admiral Chen, her face drawn and haggard, spoke up. What do you propose, sir? Eugene's expression hardened. We hit them first, a preemptive strike to shatter their staging grounds before they can launch. Murmurs of disbelief rippled through the assembled officers. General Santos shook her head. With all due respect, sir, that's suicide. Our fleet is barely half strength. Then we fight twice as hard, Eugene growled. Prep all ships for immediate departure. We leave in six hours. As the AEDC fleet surged towards the Antares cluster, Eugene paced the bridge of the Vengeance. The ship's antimatter core thrummed with barely contained power, propelling them across the vast gulfs of interstellar space. Days blurred into weeks as they pushed their engines to the limit. Finally, they dropped out of FTL on the outskirts of the Antares system. Eugene's breath caught in his throat as he took in the sight before them. The Coalition Armada filled the viewscreen, a writhing mass of alien metal that seemed to blot out the stars themselves. At its heart floated Juno's flagship, a colossal construct of twisting spires and pulsing energy fields. All ships, battle stations, Eugene commanded, his voice steady despite the hammering of his heart. Prepare to engage. The void erupted in fury as the two fleets collided. Streams of antimatter fire lanced between the warring armadas, while swarms of fighters danced and died in the chaos between. Eugene gripped his command chair as the vengeance shuddered under the onslaught. Warning klaxons blared as alien boarders punched through their defensive screens, the sounds of close quarters combat echoing through the ship's corridors. Sir, we can't hold them, his XO shouted over the din. Our lines are collapsing. Eugene's mind raced, assessing their rapidly deteriorating situation. In that moment, he made a decision that would seal the fate of two civilizations. All ships, this is Admiral Boyd, he broadcast on all frequencies. Arm all remaining warheads for planet fall. We're taking these bastards with us. With the last of their maneuvering power, Eugene guided the battered human fleet on a collision course with the system's massive gas giant. One by one, Antimatter warheads streaked from their launch tubes, plunging into the planet's roiling atmosphere. The first detonations triggered a cascading reaction, the planet's dense metallic hydrogen igniting in a fury of uncontrolled fusion. Eugene watched in awe as the gas giant's core collapsed, then exploded outward in a blinding flash of newborn starlight. As the inferno engulfed both fleets, Eugene's final transmission crackled across the airwaves. A string of coordinates, a new hope for humanity's survival in the large Magellanic Cloud. His voice, strong and clear, carried his last command to the scattered remnants of his people. This is not the end, he declared. Humanity will endure. We will rebuild and we will return stronger than ever. The universe will learn to fear the children of Earth. The transmission cut off abruptly as Eugene's escape pod was consumed by the shockwave. In its wake, a handful of automated seed ships streaked away from the devastation, carrying the last embers of human civilization towards an uncertain future among the stars. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.